The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of Power Trading Hour. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing, if you're uh, standing on your head or uh, floating in outer space. As long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we had the uh, index's gut shot uh, uh, earlier in the day. They tried to push these things up. Uh, since we got to 45.50, we really haven't had the kind of gusto and volume that we need to blow through those highs. Uh, we did have uh, the one of the Fed presidents come out and red pill us. Um, I brought this up early in the morning before we even got started, maybe around 9 o'clock, about where the uh, and when we were going to see uh, a preponderance of the evidence flip from a 50-50 chance uh, in March for a 50 percent or for a half a percent interest rate hike uh, to more than that. I thought maybe we'd go to after looking at the numbers at 830, probably go to 75 percent chance of a half a percent. And maybe by midsummer, uh, one and a half percent higher. So we shall see. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, red pilled to the fact that uh, inflation is actually killing so many of uh, the people on the low side of the socioeconomic spectrum. Uh, and the average dollar amount uh, from a year ago uh, is that uh, if you're making about thirty thousand uh, dollars a year or maybe twenty five, you're going to be paying uh, two hundred and fifty dollars more a month than you did last year for the exact same thing. Uh, about 80 of that uh, for most households is gasoline, uh, and yeah, another 170 of that for food and electricity and literally everything. Uh, the decision to go after uh, fossil fuels has leaked into everything, and whether it was the you know 1976 with Carter or today. Uh, artificially putting uh, higher prices on fuel and not letting them run at uh, market prices is always a recipe for disaster. Um, in the 70s, uh, we didn't have much of a decision on that. Uh, today, that is a decision that we could turn back on. I just don't know politically whether or not we can, or we, uh, the powers that be can. But uh, you want to see one and or two percent interest rate by the middle of the summer. Uh, go back to uh, drill, baby, drill, and uh, the problem is that literally everything t uh, touches fuel prices, and uh, the pie in the sky version of we're just going to put up windmills is about the equivalent of uh, what was it? Uh, our gang saying let's put on a show, we'll raise a bunch of cash. Uh, just not a plan, just wishes. Uh, and uh, with predictable results uh, from a model, um, like I said, uh, in 1976, uh, uh, we really didn't have much of a short-term option because we got caught with our pants down. Uh, but uh, man, today, we can make all of the energy we want, and that would uh, satiate a absolute massive amount of inflation that we have today. But it is a decision. Um, yeah, what do we got? We got Tim Ord coming on uh, at the uh, break uh, at, at 15 after the hour. Uh, if you have any questions, get them to me by email, and I'll try to get to them, uh, get them, get it to him on the break, and uh, that will do that. Um, okay, Pete says. What's, your, what's my next target for the TLT? Um, well, I think I already said it. I think it's that 132. Um, let's take a quick look as we go out here. 
Uh, yeah, we had a nice little Gartley pattern in the TLT. I would have liked that D to C leg take a little longer, but yeah, the Fed's always in there monkeying with stuff, so you never can actually do it. But you got down to 135.84 today, but uh, that's just the first bounce. You already have uh, 21 million shares compared to 21 million shares on May 12th. Uh, you got 21 million shares down here at 131.95, which would be the next level. But you went into that today. Does it break instantly? Probably not. Can it go sideways for a handful of days? Next week, uh, I'm expecting that 130, yeah, 131.95, and probably a gap down to it. I think we're just going to open up and the floodgates are going to start. The one thing I don't know is whether or not that 131.95 is going to hold. The Fed still has just a little bit of cash uh, to throw at the market until the end of March, but it may be doing nothing but the proverbial uh, Dutch boy with his finger in the dike trying to hold back uh, an immovable force. 877-927-6648. If you want to talk to uh, Tim Ord, uh, we'll be uh, going through there. He sent me three charts. I also am going to start off with where he thinks the market is. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, we're going to we're going to be gaslighted. I know that, but uh, yeah, just uh, just don't pay any attention to what they say just uh whatever they say today is the truth and whatever they said before was not but uh yeah i know how it is uh anyway like i said eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight let's do a little history we'll get that out of the way then it's all just a little bit of history repeating uh, well i forgot to even do it you know what we're gonna forget that we're gonna go right back to the charts because i forgot to get whatever the uh, thing of the day was. Oh, I did want to uh, start bringing this up because I'm going to talk to uh, Tim Ord about it. Where did it go? It has now disappeared. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's open the editor. Uh, as I said, right before Christmas, uh, this is probably the most important chart uh, that uh, we want to be keeping an eye on and thinking. Uh, I do not absolutely uh, have uh, a, uh, a uh, signal for today. We need to close below 4550. Uh, but that, I don't know how that's going to play out. We're kind of fairly below that, but um, weirder things have happened. Maybe somebody comes in. But uh, I said this chart from uh, Jean Paul. Rod Rieg is probably one of the best models about uh, how the market moves long term. And I'm going to talk to Tim about it. Uh, I sent him the chart earlier today. But it's uh, whether or not we're at the return to normal or we still have a little bit of delusion and new paradigm uh, to drive us back up to the top. Uh, he'll be looking for some bigger signals out there a lot more longer term, more than most of us consider. Uh, we'll turn him forward and we'll be talking about this when we do. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of least resistance is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. I wanted to welcome uh, to the microphones once again Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Uh, Tim, uh, of course, right. has won many awards. Hang on a second. I've got a little more of a buildup for you. Uh, I've, uh, has won uh, many awards of Timer of the Year. Uh, he's written a newsletter uh, himself for over 30 years. And uh, yeah, Jack of all trades. How you doing today, Tim? Good. Thanks for having me on. So You bet. Um, and what I wanted to say is I wanted to ask you the question first. I also wanted to say during the next break, I've already sent you a couple of emails of people asking questions, so you can look at those uh, during the break. But okay. uh, certainly uh, I sent you this chart. Let me get it here. Um, on the kind of the model I like, where the mod, uh, where the market gets to a, a high and then it starts to fail. Uh, do you think there's any validity into that uh, chart right now? I'm showing the uh, John Paul Rodrigue chart uh, from uh, his transportation website, but uh, it it you know there's not levels in this, but there is kind of the thought of the way that markets uh, come up to, to euphoric levels and then fail. Right, you're talking about basically sentiment, how sentiment kind of um, trends or fix, you know, sentiment, you know, uh, uh, if sentiment is extremely bearish at tops, you, you really don't have a top is what you're saying. And I think uh, this valuation thing you sent me here, uh, it has a lot of truth to it. You know, uh, trying to determine where we are in the current markets, um, I don't think we... You know, according to you know, to my clients, <laughs> they're they're kind of bearish here, and we we did have a you know a pretty big sell off in January, uh, but I don't, I don't think we've reached uh, the levels yet where a bear market is is about to begin uh, as far as sentiment goes. I don't because everybody on this the decline we know that oh from the high of uh, what December down to the low in January. That's about a 10% decline. And uh, I think we could possibly see a, a test of the January 24th low. But 
I don't think we're we're, we're starting a, a major decline here, at least not yet. So just because of uh, SEMA, it's not really set up where you have all that euphoric. It's nothing near what we had in 2000. Um, I, I, yeah, then. I'm not expecting the end of the world like 2000, but there was that kind of everything blew up when we came back uh, after Christmas. And you found a low, and then you moved back up uh, and had a, a fairly decent rally into March uh, in 2000, and then the wheels fell off the wagon. Right, yeah. And, um, um, well, everybody said, uh, I, I don't think we're, we're doing that here, because I, yeah, cinema's not really right. You know, when, when everybody turns bearish all at once, matter of fact, uh, I got some indicators that kind of, define uh, how a uh, sentiment is. In other words, the velocity uh, of the VIX helps define um, um, sentiment. You know, if a market declines and VIX doesn't do much, it goes up, but goes up slowly. That's usually a, a real bearish sign because people are not exiting their positions. But if the market uh, does decline and VIX goes right through the ceiling in a short period of time, uh, to me, that's a that's a more uh, panic situation. It's something that's what happened going into the January 24th low. VIX went right through the ceiling. And so the velocity of the VIX tells a big story of how, the, I guess, investors uh, perceive what the market's going to do. So, And I do you know, a lot of work with uh, ticks and trends and all that other stuff, too. But, um, you know, if, if people, because I actually caught part of that uh, decline in uh, 2000 and on that decline firstly nobody was panicking not until he got you know way into the decline and that's not happening here we already got a big panic at the uh, switch we had going to i think it was a monday on the uh, january 24th uh, so but in that 2000 decline uh, people were kind of like buying the pullback you know like i got this stock at this price it's even cheaper today, so I'll buy more type attitude. And here, they're just blowing everything out. Um, so so I don't think we're, we're set up for a 2000 decline or even a 2009 decline. You know, I, I, I could change here, but um, that's the way I see it. We had too much panic at uh, the January lows. So, um, you know, that's my feeling on that. So, but, and, and the more the panic you get, the stronger that bottom becomes. So if we go down and test the January 24th low, I'm not sure we, we're going to do that yet or not. But if we do, you know, and you see on news that um, how bad it is, the market is, uh, then um, it's a, uh, it'd be a, to me, a bullish sign. And i got quite a few different indicators that will suggest it. Because panic always comes at bottoms, and euphoria, euphoria usually comes at on tops, but euphoria is hard, harder to reach than panic. So, tops, in other words, tops are a little bit harder to, to figure out. We, we can actually look at the, the bigger, uh, longer term patterns on the SPX. I did send over those two charts. Uh, we can talk about here. that, or we're going to talk about your um, your uh, valuation here on smart money. Um, I, I'm thinking we're still in the. Uh, 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 a bullish trend here on the bigger time frames, and we can, you know, you, you got media attention here, and uh, you had a bear trap. Uh, we can talk about those if you want. No, I was just. It, it's one. It's one where you really don't know. I just uh, have been talking about it since uh, mid December when I said this is probably the most important thing, and you need to know where you're at if you're really looking at some kind of long term. Uh, belief uh, where you're going to stay long or short in the market for a while. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking of is uh, continually higher interest rates until probably midsummer, and right. that I it's just hard for me to think that there's a lot of upside to that. Uh, plus uh, a lot of uh, uh, potential worries, uh, geopolitical and uh, even political here in the United States. Well, I think the interest rates has the, has the most value. I mean, if the market's got liquidity, usually that can pretty much overcome any kind of situation. If the market, uh, the government, you know, the feds take away the, the money spigot, 
which is basically raising the interest rates, that can slow the decline. But usually the first couple, I mean, they may have a little wiggle in the market. But, you know, when interest rates really start uh, to really affect the markets in a big way when it gets to a high point, you know, 1% interest rates is not going to do a lot of damage to the market. But if you well, get a 5% I said, I, interest rate, I, I think I said, you, you will. Yeah, I sent you uh, some emails, so go ahead and check those out during the break. I do have to say okay. that something weird happened to me today at lunch, and that is I went to three different stores, uh, Walmart, Dollar Store, and the gas station, and they all had signs that they were not taking cash. Nobody showed up from Brinks or whatever with all their cash. So <laughs> whatever that's worth... You can't pay cash. You only credit right uh, today, at least in uh, Clearwater, which I thought is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. We'll be back in a minute. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com, of course, uh, multi-winner of uh, different time of the year awards and many different things but uh, at least indexes and gold and some other things uh which where do you want to go first do you want to go to one of the charts you created or the questions uh, uh some from uh, uh michael from uh i guess san francisco i think is what it said or maybe that's the other one but yeah you know, michael he, he wants to know what tesla tesla stock yeah. and actually i just pulled it up here i put a lot in a weekly chart 
you know, the last low was uh, 800, which corresponded probably to the January 24th low on the S&Ps. I still think this stock is still in an uptrend. And the previous highs, which is the January high of uh, 2021, pretty much came into that level and looks like an ABC down. Um, at least that's what the pattern is so far. So I'm thinking at worst it's a trading range and we're 800 support and you got 1200 area, which is previous highs resistance. And I think this is just an ABC down. If the S and P's test the January 24th low, Tesla's probably test its previous low, which is 800. So, you know, if you can get close to mid 800 or lower, it's probably a good buy. That's how I'm viewing it. The monthly Bollinger Bands are still trending higher, and the weeklies are also. So uh, if you go back up to the 1,200 area and it stalls up there, they'll give time for the monthly Bollinger Bands to flip sideways, and that would probably mean a trading range. So I think there's a buy at 800 or a little bit better, or 800 or above, and I think you have resistance at 1,200. If you get through 1,200, then um, on and upward. So um, I don't see a top in this one. So, but low 800 is probably a buy. 1200, you'd have to watch it real closely to see if that's resistance or it can break through. So, okay. Um, the next one is a VIX. And uh, uh, Pete from San Francisco, I guess this is one from San Francisco. Uh, can you ask him when he thinks a VIX bottom is in and where he sees a VIX volatility going from here? Um, yeah, I actually do think the VIX bottom was made on uh, January 24th, and I do a lot of different work with VIX. It's a pretty good indicator. Uh, like I said, I, I got an RSI of VIX. I got a rate of change of the VIX, which works really good. The faster that VIX moves, the more uh, the more panic you're seeing and the more closer to the bottom you are. And uh, we got VIX uh, bottom rings on that January 24th low. Usually, on a re if the market does retest the January 24th low, the VIX will make a lower high. And that will give you uh, a little bit more confirmation that the market's not breaking down, keeping on going lower. Uh, so um, I don't have that VIX chart right in front of me. But uh, it'll probably start staying above 20. I don't think we'll have a trending market this year. I think it'll be more of a um, – I, I still think actually uh, – from my work so far, I, uh, I still think we'll have an up year this year, uh, but maybe it's not as obviously as good as last year, but still up. Um, and so the VIX, I think, will stay above 20, more or less. Um, how high it'll go, I'm not sure. Because the first half of the year is usually the most trickiest going into a July. Then after that, uh, it's a little bit more... Or even though you, you do get a sell in May attitude where you pick it up in the July bottom. But uh, um, February and March are kind of tricky. So um, I think we're kind of in the trading range here. And with that trading range may last till May. So, um, but anyhow, that's a fix. Uh, I think it is a, has made a low. And uh, the next low in the market will make a higher VIX. And, and, I think this year, again, the VIX will be a higher range than we had, what, last year. Because last year, it was pretty much of a trending market. It kind of just went up and stayed up. So I hope that answers that question. <laughs> so, okay. But, uh, Which one to charts do you want to go to first? Um, actually, we look looking at this gold chart. You know, it's, it's it's got so many things going for it. And, and, it's, and the trouble is this is a monthly chart. And it may not change much over the next couple of weeks because it's a monthly chart. But you got a lot of things going for it here. Uh, the top pattern, this pattern, or this pattern that I'm pointing out on gold, it's a monthly chart and goes back to mid-2009. And to me, this is, I label it as the head and shoulders bottom, or you can do a cup and handle thing if you want. And... Uh, I did some Fibonacci studies on it. I took the low from 2019 up, and the market you know, held above the 61.8% retracement, which is really bullish. And it's kind of a drawing a triangle there pattern. I have a trend line connecting the highs going back to the August 2020 high, and we're right smack at the breakout area. And to really confirm this breakout, you should see a sign of strength through this area. 
uh, sign of strength is uh, kind of a, a big push in volume and price. Uh, and so volume should really pick up here if, if and when it breaks out. You should see a big jump in volume and a pretty much a, a big price swing here also. So in, the line... Go, go in ahead. triangles, you talk about uh, about them breaking uh, and doing a head fake before they go the uh, way you want. Uh, right. Is this good enough of the asymmetrical triangles you talk about? Yeah, it could be. You know, the first breakout fails and, you know, and it gets everybody discouraged and you could come back. And that could do that here. You're right. Those triangles are really, you know... I hate triangles, but that's if you ever look at most char- charts, they're all triangles, you know. So, and yeah, this one could be a false breakout. That and and even it could come back a month and down a month and come back up and still keep the pattern pretty much symmetrical to the left shoulder and uh, being symmetric. So, is this a breakout? We're happening right now. Maybe, maybe not. But eventually, because it so far over the last, uh, what, two years now, has only managed to retrace 61.8%, or uh, has only retraced uh, uh, 38.2% retracement of the previous rally. So this, because of the retracement, this uh, gold is in a strong position. You know, the only thing we're kind of arguing about is when the breakout occurs. And But if you look at the slow stochastics on the monthly time frame, it's been trending up since about eyeballing here. It looks like about October. And uh, even though it hasn't done much since October, uh, the you know, momentum rules all the indicators. Uh, so no matter, you know, if the momentum's up, you, you remain long. And momentum's up on this one so far. If you look at the bottom window there, you got uh, a real narrow range on GLD, which is ETF for gold. And it's kind of the same pattern here, but it's, it's a little bit clearer that the Bollinger Bands are really pinching pretty strongly here. And if the market goes sideways in even a couple of months, that pinch will even come stronger. So that suggests at some point we're due to break out of this dull market that's been going on since October. And either we go up or we go down. But with mo- mo- month- monthly momentum, which rules weekly momentum, momentum, which rules daily momentum, it suggests the break will be to the upside at some point. Okay. Well, we're going to the break. We'll come back. We've got two more charts uh, with him and maybe another question or two from uh, our listeners. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We return. Uh, we pop back into the market. Uh, S and P's off uh, 62, Dow down uh, 437, Nasdaq off 201, uh, Russell 2000 off 20, uh, crude oil yeah, up 15 cents, gold down three bucks, and of course uh, we had the, one of the Fed uh, voters come out and say that he was uh, for a half price uh, rate hike uh, in uh, March, and of course uh, we also have. Uh, them done with bond buying uh, next month too so it's uh, all going to hit the proverbial fan uh, what ch chart do you want to look at uh, next here uh, yeah, I got chart number one look at NDX okay um, I got red circles around uh, uh, actually this is a monthly chart of NDX going back to uh, looks like about 19 mid-1985 and I have the red circles show the times when the uh, um, NDX fell below its mid Bollinger Band, which pretty much defines the trend of the market. And uh, and I, and we, you know, we fell back there in 1987. That was the 87 crash. We fell back there. Uh, that was pretty much it. Turned around within a couple of months and got above the mid Bollinger Band. It happened again in 1990. Stayed down there for month or two and started a rally. It happened in 2000, stayed below uh, the Bollinger Band for uh, mid-Bollinger Band for about two years there. Uh, did it again in, in 2008 and 2009. And uh, I got a circle right now. We're still above it. Matter of fact, the uh, January 24th low in NDX touched that mid-Bollinger Band. And that's all it did. Um, so if, if, if you're Momentum, in my opinion, rules all indicators. Until the market falls below the mid Bollinger Band uh, is when you really got to get bearish. And so far, that hasn't happened. If you look at the other highs, like 2008 high, you know, it went down and tried to rally back, and it's kind of hard to see, but it just got back to the mid Bollinger Band and turned back down again. In 2000, top, you uh, went down real hard, uh, rallied back, but didn't make uh, new highs on the second rally, and the second decline really got uh, kind of a nasty. So all I'm saying here, uh, what's going on now, is the market uh, market just didn't really top and go straight down. It makes attempts to at least get back to the old highs. And if it can't do that, that's when things can turn ugly. So uh, even though January was a down month, uh, the market at some point between now and May will probably make an attempt to get back to the old highs. And that attempt to get back to the old highs will tell a story of what the really market's doing. So until that happens, I'm not bearish here and, uh, because momentum, the monthly momentum charts are still trending higher. Uh, so, and the RSI, uh, that's the top window there. You can get bearish when the uh, monthly RSI falls below 50. We're coming in right now about 65. So, um, can market just keep going down from here? Uh, yeah, but 
uh, you already had pretty much big panics at that January low uh, and a lot of different indicators, including the ticks and trend and along with the VIX. Uh, so that's probably a durable low, at least right now. And I think the worst case scenario is it could be tested. And it doesn't even have to get down there. But uh, I think after May, uh, we'll determine what really goes on in the market. You know, between now and then, I think the worst case scenario is basically the January low. And probably the best case scenario is also uh, the December high. So I think we're just, you know, right now we're smack in the middle of those two ranges. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of waiting here to determine what the market's going to do. And it's, it's, if it rallies up, tries to take out the high, we'll tell a big story. Or if it declines and it can't take out the previous low, we'll tell a big story. So, uh, you know, if, if you're a long-term player right now, it's, it's still not bearish, I'll put it that way. Momentum's up. Until momentum turns down, is is when you got to protect your your portfolio, and I don't see that here yet. So, well, I I, the, I guess the last time we really had the Fed really kind of aggressively raise rates with massive uh, inflation was the late seventies and early eighties, and it took a, about a couple of years to get through that. Um, I think that was before when you were really trading, right? Uh, I was in. Mar I got. I became a stockbroker in '77. Okay. And uh, I was. I was actually uh, uh, trading options on the, the the gold stocks, and that's when gold was flying. And so, uh, up to that, you know, 1980 period, um, then I, I stayed too long. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, but as usual. But anyhow. Um, yeah, back then I didn't know. Is you know I was kind of a you know late twenties, early thirties, but I didn't know a whole lot. Kind of feet in my pants, and I didn't have really technical analysis back then. It was all fundamental, but um, I kind of just traded uh, you know kind of a moving average type thing, and it's and it worked at the time. So, but uh, yeah, and, and interest rates they were raising interest rates like crazy, and I mean uh, I bought a house, and I think it was eleven and a half percent interest rate. So it was huge, and uh, so that kind of killed the, the the housing market back there because most people couldn't carry that mortgage with eleven percent interest rate. So, well, but, we've got uh, yeah. chart number two here, and about two minutes left. All right. Well, that's kind of the same thing here. If you notice, uh, I have a little window on the right there. We didn't even get down to the mid Bollinger Band on uh, the S and P's, which suggests the S and P's a little bit stronger than the Nasdaq. Um, we've got things kind of oversold here. The bottom window is the summation index, and uh, it's, it's right around minus 500, which is in the past, that's usually where it kind of bottoms out. It could get worse than that, but usually in most cases around here, if you look at the 2016, you know, it's pretty much bottom in this vicinity, so I'm thinking that's what's happening here. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really a big bear here yet because. Everybody's kind of on the, uh, the very side. If you look at, uh, which I probably should have sent it over, but the National Association of Indiv Individual Investors are also uh, way on the very side, just on a, a decline uh, in that January decline. And they're still on the very side. So I'm, I'm thinking whoever's bearish are kind of staying bearish here. So uh, I, I don't see a, a, a you know, I'm thinking whatever happens here the next month or two is not going to be any damaging, go more damage going on. I think the damage could occur basically in the May time frame, especially if we're back up to the highs and we can't get through those highs. Then I think you can see some real damage. But until that happens, or if we just keep breaking new highs, which I don't think that's going to happen either, but um, I, don't, I don't see any real big danger right here in the market. So momentum's up and uh, until it turns down uh, I think it's a, you know, a, a good situation I'll put it that way well I want so. to thank Tim Ord uh, for joining us again if you want any of these charts you can email me we'll talk about that on the other side and uh, that's it uh, Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com thanks again and uh, we'll turn in a minute
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get ready to uh, wrap up the end of the day here, uh, off uh, 77 points on the S&P cash, uh, 4509. Uh, as far as I'm looking at, anything below 50, uh, 4550 is a probably a fairly big long-term uh, sell signal. And at least you're probably going to retest that uh, low of 4250-ish, uh, uh, that area. And maybe you bounce, maybe you don't. Uh, I just have a, a little bit more uh, unsanguine uh, than uh, Tim on that. Uh, the thing that really kind of makes me, and I actually said it this morning was uh, in my newsletter, was that the, the massively shorted stocks are not doing much. And uh, you know, that's really kind of changed. And, it, you know, it's not always you get a clear signal, uh, but certainly the ability for AMD, NVIDIA, some of these other ones that were, you know, shorted 40 percent yesterday, really, even from the uh, beginning, weren't able to hold a little higher. I'm not going to short AMD with those kind of numbers. Uh, I think there's a lot of other better stocks out there to be short long term. But uh, I, we're at the point where we're probably getting a fairly decent signal. The only thing that would change things is uh, when I look at options tonight, um, they showed something that was uh, very bearish. Uh, and I was trying to figure out any way to... Uh, to say that the everything else was lining up with that this morning. But 
it, it's tough. You know that you got the Fed out there still has a little money to throw at the market. And uh, even though, as I said in an update today, uh, I think everybody got red pilled on what the interest rates are going to be today uh, and what they're going to be forward. The question is, do we get three uh, rate hikes at a half a percent apiece to the point that where they were talking today about uh, one and a half percent higher by uh, midsummer? Uh, I'm going to say probably one and a quarter probably split the difference but i think it's still going to be a big deal so when you can not when you have to we'll see you here tomorrow same bat channel same bat time